all of the gameplay samples you've been watching right now were captured on an iPad. Wow. In this video sponsored by Elgato and their HD60X capture card, I'm gonna walk you through the future of video capture on the go and event capture and everything that's changing with the iPad OS 17 update. Well, relating to capture. Apple is about to disrupt the field monitor and recorder market with a long requested feature in that iPad OS version 17, which is currently in a free developer beta, has UVC support, which is a USB video class driver, which most of the newer video capture cards on the market use that kind of driver, which means that they're plug and play with you know, Mac, Linux, Windows, and now iPad. And that includes Elgato's HD60X. This has been super requested. This is something that kind of exists in a couple Android versions, but the implementation is pretty whack. And as far as I can tell, most software just doesn't support it. There are a few apps that do, but realistically it doesn't exist. But it's implemented quite beautifully on the iPads. And because the newer iPads have USB 3 over Type-C, or the newer ones have Thunderbolt, you have full bandwidth capabilities here. Anyone looking to capture or stream on the go is about to have a much easier time, especially those either, you know, who just want to quickly capture their TV setups without having a whole computer with you, or those traveling to esports events and needing to do game capture events for pre-release footage and promotions and things like that. It's about to get so much easier. The testing I've done for this so far has been with both a pre-Apple Silicon M1 iPad Pro, which is like the A19X that I got back in 2020, as well as the new M2 iPad Pro, both of which are on the different sides of the coin in terms of Apple hardware, but both have USB Type-C on board. By default, this feature currently is only supported in FaceTime because it's a brand new in beta. There isn't app support for it yet. It's literally just testing, although that is fine for just monitoring your cameras. But the user nonexist01 on Reddit has uploaded a test flight beta app that you can download and test called Capture Pro that actually allows you to capture images and video. And oh my goodness, this is exciting. It is very early days. This is a beta, just very rough program at the moment, but this is the most promising first look at this kind of advancement and what we're going to be able to do that you can get right now. The app is in beta. There's a lot of quirks to it. It's not finished, but it's off to a great start. It lets you capture an H.264 or HEVC, which is toggled on by default on both my older iPad and my newer iPad Pro in 4K30, 1440p60, 1080p120 if your capture card supports it which is insane. Again, my primary testing for this video was with the Elgato HD60X. They are sponsoring this video. This is their newest USB capture card that supports all kinds of stuff. I'll have my review link to it in the description below, but it supports 4K60 pass-through, 1440p144 pass-through, 1080p240 pass-through, and HDR pass-through, allowing to capture all this stuff. And it's the first officially licensed G-Sync pass-through capture card as well, if you're looking to capture PC games, which is pretty wild connects via USB Type-C, and it is UVC compliant, meaning it has this kind of universal USB driver here for the video capture card. It means it's plug and play on any operating system, any computer, and now your iPad with this new app. It has a nice minimal design compared to plenty of other capture cards on the market these days. It has an audio jack up front to make audio mixing easier, and it has very competitively low latency input in terms of your preview to like OBS on the computer and things like that. Doesn't necessarily mean much for the iPad configuration just due to the way the iPad preview works at the moment, but it's very low latency. Setting this up with the Capture Pro app is very simple to use. You just plug it in, make sure your HDMI source is connected and you're running a game console within the supported formats, and the app just kind of detects it by default. It just automatically shows it. If you don't have anything, it'll show the Elgato no signal screen, which is pretty cool. And then you can go into the settings and kind of mess with it. I, it. I had no issues with it passing through the feed, with it detecting the video that I was sending, any of that. Audio doesn't seem to record with any of the devices I tested here, just at all. I could not get audio to work at all, but that just seems to be a limitation of the app. Like I said, sometimes the settings reset. It, it's got some quirks, but I have not been excited for the future of where things are going with this kind of tech in quite a few years. This is making me happy. I tested capturing from the PC, both at ultra wide resolutions and standard 16x9, PlayStation 5, Xbox, uh, Nintendo Switch. I even tested the RetroTINK 5X. Everything ran smoothly, just as I expected. Ultra wide, the way it was passed through and captured is still letterbox within a 1440p frame, which is fine for what you're doing. It, it's on an iPad. But with all of these consoles, all this PC, all I had to do was just plug in 
the, the Elgato to my iPad and set it up next to my TV or by my computer and I could start capturing without having to fiddle with anything on the computer, saving you that extra performance and all that hassle, which is pretty interesting, especially because on PC, I just display cloned over to here instead of even using the pass through. There are a couple quirks you need to know about the videos being captured here in that they are recorded in VFR or variable frame rate, which means that the frame rate isn't as consistent or smooth as it could be. That is a kind of, I'm fairly certain that's a consequence of just how the hardware encoders on basically every mobile device, but even on the iPad works. However, you can do CFR, constant frame rate encodings on other M2 devices like my Mac Studio. So I, I, I'm gonna type up a bunch of feedback to post in the Reddit thread for the dev, and I hope we get an option for that because the iPad, the, the, the M2 chip is definitely capable of it. Although I will say that I did have smoother frame rate results on my M2 iPad Pro than my older A19X one, but it was very minimal. Anyone except Vegas Pro editors will want to kind of lock the frame rate before editing the video. If you upload it straight to YouTube or whatever, it'll be fine. But if you're wanting to edit in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, especially Premiere Pro, you might have some issues with audio sync or just the judder in the frame from VFR files. Uh, you can do so. I have a couple older, super old videos at this point linked in the video description. You can do it with Handbrake, you can do it with FFmpeg, or with Fast Flicks on Mac. I'll try to, I guess, get a tutorial up on that soon since I haven't been covering Mac stuff before. But overall, quality is pretty nice. Data rates average around 20 to 25-ish megabits per second in HEVC, which should be enough for 1080p, 1440p video. Yeah, looks pretty good to my eye, but especially considering it's a portable capture setup, that is amazing. It beats out basically every little portable capture card on the market in terms of quality. Those typically always have, you know, low bit rates and poor quality because they're recording to little SD cards. I've got one terabyte of storage in my iPad and it's just recording to HEVC without issue. If you're just wanting a monitor, iPads have amazingly bright and high quality screens these days, making them a great choice for monitoring applications like this. Like right now, I'm sending the camera feed you're watching right now, both to my seven inch normal field monitor I would typically use and my older 11 inch iPad Pro. And I can see significantly better and make sure like I'm in frame and everything's going well, significantly better on my iPad Pro here than my level seven inch recorder that I would typically be using. And plus you don't need the HD60X for that. You could actually use their CamLink 4K, which was their original capture card designed to be used with cameras. Just get a little USB-A to USB-C adapter for it. You got a nice 4K video feed running right into your iPad. This is the future of capture setups. So it's a lot more modular, a lot more adapted to modern use cases while still being functional for other things. You can still pull up your chat or, you know, the new Stream Deck app on iPad or whatever while you're doing all of this. I've been experimenting with on this channel, obviously capture cards in general, but portable capture cards off and on. I don't even talk about them very much in videos, but I've been doing it for years and I'm always disappointed because the quality is poor and the workflow isn't super great. And I got to remember this extra device. The iPad's going to be with me if I'm traveling with my usual kit, like I'm taking it to LTX and things like that. It's going to be with me. So I can just throw the capture card in my bag Good to go. We will need a lot more software support for this. This is a brand new beta feature. Typically, these creative apps always get tons of extra support on, on iPads and Apple devices. So I'm expecting lots to come up. Like Filmic Pro already has ProRes encoding on the M2 here. So hopefully we get an OBS-like uh, streaming and multi-view program on iPad OS 2. It's unlikely we'll get OBS specifically anytime soon due to some weird licensing issues with the App Store, but hopefully something like a Prism Live updates for this feature because they tried to support the UVC on Android. So hopefully they will update for this because then you get proper live streaming support and things like that. And hopefully other programs show up as well. And super exciting for me, as I, as I kind of alluded to, the M2 iPad Pros, the sixth generation iPad Pros support ProRes encoding, even in 4.2 two that the Macs can do, the iPads can do now. You could do lossless encoding, which bypasses any c compression issues from a bitrate or anything like that. And it's blazing fast to edit. And I can just airdrop it straight to my Mac. Like that would be amazing. Again, Filmic Pro supports it. This app currently doesn't. I've been talking to the dev trying to see if it's something that they could get working right now. But in theory, whatever future app comes out could just enable that. And immediately you're gonna have a much better frame rate and quality than any of the HEVC options available for recording on the iPad right now. Like that is, Huge. I'm also hoping just a dedicated monitoring app comes along in general that supports things like scopes and waveforms and LUTs and false color and focus peaking and all of that so you can replace your standard field monitor with something that's bigger and better and you can see a lot better with it. Like that would be amazing and that's something they just got to implement in software which would be really cool. I've never personally been to like a game capture event but I've been to conventions to, to 
LTXs, to game shows and things like that. And I've supported plenty of others building their game capture setups and configuring them for those kinds of events. And it seems within the next year, we could see those entire setups being replaced by an iPad and an HD60X. And those creators would have a lot less headache involved in their lives. I do hope once that time comes, I can go to such a game capture event. Because like I said, I've helped out a ton of people with their setups for it, but I've never been to it myself. Seems like fun. If you're interested in checking out the original video samples that I captured straight from the iPad, I'll have a couple ways that my paid supporters can get access to those in the video description, just because a couple of y'all always want them. And otherwise, check out the links to the HD6. Yes, this is basically the best USB capture card on the market right now for gamers. And it's pretty sick. I'll have my review link to it in the video description as well. Let me know what you're looking forward to in the comments regarding this kind of workflow. Like, is this something you would use? What else do you need? Like, what else do you require for this to be a part of your workflow? I'm going to be doing future testing with the M2 iPad. I just got this in uh, to see because it should work with Thunderbolt docks. So theoretically, we can get some of those mobile oriented audio things going. And then you really have a streaming setup. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. And if you're like, well, hold up, why is this dude talking about Apple? You need to check out this video where I talked about giving up Windows for my main rig and checking out my Mac Studio. We're going to have a lot of stuff coming from there. Remember to be kind. Rewind.